All right, in this video, I wanna show you my workflow to getting my talking headshot to look like this. Before we get into the color grading itself, I think it's important to touch upon the camera settings and the lighting first. So we're gonna do that very briefly. In camera, I'm shooting 30 frames per second. I right now have my shutter speed at one over 50. I know that sounds wrong, but otherwise the lights in the background would flicker. And then I'm just shooting at f2.8. I have an ND filter on just so those lights are not blown out completely. And then I'm using the DJI mic right here with a lavalier mic on to get the audio the way it sounds now. For the lighting, I'm using the Xeon Modus X100. I'm gonna run a little montage here where I'm setting it up while I'm speaking over it. But the light here is set to my right at I think around 45 degree angle at 5600 Kelvin and around 35% because I have the ND filter on as well. I'm running a USB-C cable right to it from an anchor adapter that can go to 100 watts so that I can run it at full power if I need to. And then I have a little other light, the Xeon M20C, I think it's called just an RGB light, just to get me a little bit more of this light. You can see I can turn it off and turn it on again, just to give a little bit of a fill light. Now, I'm no lighting expert by any means. I'm still playing around with this, trying to figure out how everything works. In camera, I've set it to 5200 Kelvin because otherwise I find that it's a bit too red. But as I'm not a lighting expert and I still haven't fully figured out how to make the Kelvin work between the light and the camera to get the perfect settings. What I'm doing is that I know how to color grade, so I will just fix it in post, but I'm getting as close as I can. I am trying to use this Sony lens cap here in the FX3 to try and balance the lighting, but I keep getting different results depending on how I angled it. And sometimes when I angle it the way I think it should be, it says Kelvin 4000 in camera. And I know that's wrong. So still haven't fully figured that out. Let me know if you have any suggestions to make this better. I could have a hair light, but it's too much to set up. So this is kind of what I'm going with. The reason I'm using these lights is because we travel all around the world and I need something that I can bring with me that's very simple and easy to use. And these lights are so small that it's easy to bring around. Are there better lights? Probably, but these works perfectly for what I need. The Godo softbox is something I got separately. And then I just had that bones mount adapter that I can put on and then I can put this up and it works perfectly fine as it is. So with all of that set, let's just get a little frame here that we can use to color grade. And let's jump into the s -Log free color grading workflow that I've set up for this. It's slightly different from what I used to do color grading wise. I'm pl always playing around with new techniques. So this is what I'm currently doing. So let's get a frame here. And then let's jump straight into it. All right, so we are inside DaVinci and first I'm just gonna build out the note tree. So I don't know exactly how many nodes it is, but we're gonna start like this. So we're gonna go from log to DaVinci White Gamut. And at the end, we're going to go from DaVinci White Gamut to Rec 709. Then around here, we're gonna have my lot. We're gonna have some exposure adjustments. We're gonna use some saturation here and potentially balance it out a little bit as well. Then here we're gonna have curves and we are gonna have the color slice and we're gonna add a few more. This one will be an outside node. So we're gonna have inside, outside, and then at the end, we're gonna use the Dehancer plugin. So this is essentially what it looks like. The only thing I'm gonna change now before we get started is saturation here. We're gonna change, change to color space to HSV and then channel one and channel three will be turned off. That means that we're only using the saturation part of the hue, saturation and value, I think it's called, of this one. So when we're using, for example, the tone curve, we are only affecting the saturation. And then the other thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna head into the HDR wheel here and in the settings, I'm gonna set the color space to DaVinci White Gamut and to DaVinci Intermediate. Okay, so now that everything is set up, let's start with the conversion. We head into effects, we take the color space transform here, and I choose S log free or S Cine Gamut dot Cine, S, Sony S Gamut free dot Cine. I don't know why it has a name like that. Sony log free, change it into Vinci White Gamut and DaVinci Intermediate. And then on the last, second last note here, we are going to add another color space transform and that goes from DaVinci White Gamut and DaVinci Intermediate into Rex 99 and Gamma 2.4. I have my display set up to sRGB, which is pretty close to Rex 709, Gamma 2.4. That's why I'm exporting to this. Rex 709A might work better for you if you don't have your display set up properly and you're using a MacBook like me. So just a note there, I do have a video on how I set mine up, but 
in this video, I just wanted to mention that. All right, so already, I think it looks pretty good. Just the conversion here out of the FX3, pretty happy and satisfied with how it's looking so far. If you're looking at the uh, colors here in the vector scope and the uh, overall waveform, everything looks pretty good. Nothing is clipping, even the lights in the background. That's why we're using the ND filter. So the next step for me, which will make the scene a little bit darker usually, is to add my LUT. So I'll head into LUTs here. I'm going to the color pack cinematic LUTs and then my everyday cinematic 2. That's usually the look I'm going for. It's pretty much the only LUT that I'm using ever. Sometimes I use a different one, but for the most part, this is the LUT that I always use. Okay, so that made some of things a little bit darker. You can see it's just lowering the exposure a little bit. So what I will aim for is that my skin here is around 70. And right now you can see here, it's, it's around 60. If you want to display qualifier focus, you can hit these three dots, display qualifier focus, and then have the qualifier on, then you can see exactly where things are lying. I used to use the offset a lot. Now, at days, I'm pretty much using the HDR, but only for exposure. So what I'll do here is I'll just try and bump it up half a step. And then we can see it's actually lying pretty much at 70 now, the brightest part of my skin. So I'm pretty happy with that. And it just brightens up everything pretty well. Now, the reason why I'm using the HDR wheels now is because this is actual stops, whereas when I'm using the offset, it's not actual stops. So this just makes it a little bit easier in that regard. It takes a little bit longer to set up, but yeah, that's how it is. And normally I have this saved. Now I'm just building everything up for you guys. All right. Then I usually like to just add a little bit of saturation here in the beginning, just to boost everything a little bit, make it look a little bit better. Something like this, just give it a little bit more color. We can always come back and adjust this again. And the reason why I'm moving backwards is because I want to first have the LUT set, so all the colors are how I want them, then the exposure to get everything sitting in the right place, then adding a little bit of saturation, and now I'm gonna balance if there's anything needing balancing. Normally, I find that the S-Log here, compared to my R6 that I had before, or I still have, but I'm having the Sony on loan, is a little bit too magenta for my liking. So here I will head into the primaries and I'll just take the hue here. I tend to find that 48 or 49 just gives me a little bit more what I want instead of that magenta hue, as you can see. It was slightly more magenta, but it wasn't really that bad here. If you zoom blood in, you can see my skin is a little bit more magenta. Now it's a little bit more yellow. If you go down to 48, that might even have made uh, might have been a little bit too green. So I think 49 is the sweet spot for this time. Sometimes it's 48, depends a little bit. So what we've done up until now is adding the LUT, changing the exposure, adding a little bit of saturation, and then adjusting the balance ever so slightly. So now we've corrected and we've added a LUT and a look. So I'm pretty satisfied with this so far. Now I wanna go into the curves because in my face here, I tend to have a lot of red spots that I don't like that much. So what I do, if you just single out the vector scope here, a little bit smaller, something like this, is that you can see the colors are spread out a little bit around the red and the yellow here, around the skin tone line. And I like my skin tones to be pretty uh, set in the same area. So I'll, you can either point and draw around here. I'll give you a selection. I usually make it myself just because sometimes it's a bit off, but I will just lower the left point here around minus eight normally. And then I'll make a point here on the right. Usually go plus four here. And that might actually be a little bit too far in the wrong direction. This is better. So zero here in the rotation. And then I'm just actually just taking all the red hues here without touching the lips. So they are a little bit more red. You can not really see them here. If we turn up the vectors color here. I still can't really see them, but if I hovering over this, you can see they're lying up here, which is more to the red. And now my skin tones are a bit more yellow, even overall, which is how, how I like them. I don't like all those small nuances. I want it to be pretty much set like this. And then I'll go into the color slice, which is one of the new tools in DaVinci. Just make sure that my skin tones just touch pretty well here and holding down this will show that. And I tend to go about 0.1.10 around that in saturation here, just to get a little bit more color in my skin. And then I like to just boost this a little bit as well to like 20 or something, just to give myself a little bit more saturation, a little bit more depth and lowering the overall colors of my skin a little bit. It does affect the lamps in the background, but not in my opinion in a bad way. So I'm pretty happy with that. Then I will usually go back and now we can't use double anymore. So we'll just do it one at a time just to check that everything's still sitting where it's supposed to. 
we can see the fall off has actually made my skin here fall off a little bit. So it's a little bit lower now than it was before with all our adjustments, but we can always go back to the exposure in the end. So what I do here is I go to my inside and outside node first, and I draw a circle around myself here, feather it out, and I tend to go down. So everything is pretty much set here. And then I tend to go in and add just a little bit more contrast with the tone curve here. Just bump up the highlights a little bit and lower the shadows a tiny bit as well. Something like this just gives me a bit more contrast in my face overall, which I think looks better. And then for the outside, I just kind of like to make my scene outside a little bit darker. So just lower it, pull the focus in on me, something like this. And I think that's pretty good. Selecting the masks and see what they did. And this, which is more flat, so this that just draws everything in a little bit more, puts a little bit more attention on me and puts a little bit more contrast in my skin tones overall. So now I'll go back in and look here and see it's not touching it fully. So I will just go back into my exposure here. Usually try something like 6.5 to see if that helps. And that puts us just around the 70 mark. So that's pretty much the main part of the workflow. If we turn everything off, LUT, exposure, saturation, balance, then adjusting the curves and the color slice here. Everything is pretty minor, but everything comes together slowly, then adding a bit more contrast in my face and lowering the outside here, just to bring everything together a little bit more. So now comes the last little step here, and that is the Dehancer. So if you search for Dehancer here, this is not sponsored by them at all. I normally don't use it that much. It's more a film emulation tool. But what I like to do here, I think I saw it in a Sam Sheffer video once. It's just turn everything off to begin with. So scroll down, turn everything off. But what I like to do then is go into film compression here. And let's just zoom into my face so you can actually see what's going to happen along with having the waveform open. If I turn on the film compression, it'll just kind of take all the brighter parts of my skin here and just kind of neutralize them a little bit. Gives a more flat and soft look. I don't want it to be this harsh, so I usually take the impact off a little bit, try and move around the white point here, so that just gets off a little bit as well. I only want it to be very subtle, so what I like to do is just play around with these sliders a little bit to get to where I like it. I don't think color density usually does that much, and I think this is pretty good. I don't want it to be as flat as it was in the beginning, just wanted to do a tiny bit just to get rid of those harsher, brighter lights. And then this, I think, is a pretty good look. So we take the final result. This is what we started with. This was the S-Log3, and this is what we are ending up with. And yeah, that's pretty much the workflow. If you want to learn how to color grade from A to Z and learn all the basics and everything about it, I do have a color grading course. I also have a ton of videos here on YouTube where I mainly focused on color grading before, I'm moving out and diversifying a little bit more. But when I get to new things, new techniques, new things, I will update with videos like this one. But if you wanna learn everything from A to Z and how everything that I went through here works, then you should definitely check out the color grading course. It's in the description down below. And with that said, let me know if you have any questions, if you have any suggestions or improvements to my lighting setup here that could make it better. And if you have anything you saw that you might think this tweak could make it a little bit better, I'm always ears. I love to hang out with you guys in the comments below. So from a comment, also if you just liked the video and don't forget to like and subscribe if you enjoyed it. And then I'll just see you in the next video. Until then, take care.